I wrote this research paper from start to finish using AI. It was published in a Q1 journal. There is no plagiarism and there is no AI score. Let's be honest, anyone can tell an AI to write me a research paper, but what do you get? A bland, shallow, and unpublishable piece that no serious professor or journal will take seriously. The truth is, AI can only be as good as the person prompting it. If you don't understand what each section of a research paper really requires, from the abstract to the conclusion, the AI won't either. In this video, I'll show you how to write a high-quality, fast, and effective research paper the right way, using any AI of your choice. You'll get powerful prompts for every section of your paper, so you can guide your AI to create work that's not just acceptable for college, but potentially publishable in top-tier Q1 journals. This video will be helpful to both beginners and professional writers. If you follow the steps and prompts I will show you, your research paper will be free from AI plagiarism, excellent, systematic, impactful, clear, and even original and rigorous. Let's get started now. We will use this title as an example, Remote Work and Employee Productivity After COVID-19 in the U.S. Now, while structures vary slightly by discipline and journal, most college research papers and Q1-ranked academic journals follow the IMRAD format, Introduction, Methods, Results, and Discussion, but with refined subheadings that demonstrate analytical depth, originality, and clarity. I suggest the following headings. Introduction slash background. Literature review. Methods. Results. Discussion and of course, the conclusion. I will show you how to prompt the AI you are using to write each of these sections one after the other. Let's move on to one of the most critical and challenging parts of any research paper, the introduction. This section sets the tone for your entire paper. It tells the reader what your study is about, why it matters, and how it fills a gap in existing knowledge. If your introduction is weak or confusing, your readers and journal reviewers will lose interest before they even reach your results. Now, many students make the mistake of starting their introduction by diving straight into our literature or repeating textbook definitions. But that's not how top-tier Q1 journals want it. A strong introduction is like an inverted triangle. You start broad, giving background and context then narrow it down to your specific research question or hypothesis. <laughs> I will not bore you with the steps on how to write the introduction since AI will do it for us. So just use this prompt. Look at this. You can edit it a bit to suit your goals and style. For example, I will delete some of the subheadings, like literature synthesis and the theoretical lens. You also have to remove these M dashes if you want to get a 0% or low AI score on top AI detectors. Then, writing a literature review section is another important section especially when you are doing either qualitative or quantitative research, or even a mixed method. If your research paper is a systematic review, a literature review might not be necessary. Typically, to write a literature review, you have to first make the objectives of your research paper clear and formulate subheadings based on the objectives before gathering relevant scholarly sources through systematic research. Then, Analyze and summarize each paper using tools like an analysis grid to identify key methods, findings, and gaps. Finally, synthesize and evaluate the information by comparing results, identifying patterns, and writing a coherent narrative that highlights trends, contradictions, and future research directions. But this time, we will make AI do this for us to save our time. There are two ways you can do this. 
Gather all the materials you want to use for the literature review and use AI like Consensus, Ginny AI, Answer This, etc. to extract key points and arguments. Or you can use ChatGPT's deep research to just do the work for you by giving it a direction. You can use ChatGPT's deep research for free, though only five times a month. It is typically not detected on AI detectors, although sometimes you could get a false positive using this AI. Prompt ChatGPT Deep Research to write a critical and analytical literature review of 1,000 to 1,200 words on Insert Your Topic Here, directly related to the clear objectives of the study. Also, insert the objectives of the study. To begin, Broadly state and explain the topic and its significance. Then, critically synthesize the most relevant literature to your research aims. Examine how each study considers its aim, method, findings, and limitations critically. Point out how each study contributes to the research problem. Use the comparison of results to identify patterns, contradictions, and knowledge gaps. Finally, Assess the overall condition of the literature, why it does or does not correspond to the aims and objectives of the study, and how your research will address the gap. ChatGPT's deep research usually asks more questions to clarify what users actually want. It took about seven minutes for this literature review to be written. This is impressive. The review was critical and well-grounded in literature. However, you will have to edit, especially with the awkward in-text citation. The studies and links are authentic, not just properly cited. The next section is the methods section. All right, let's talk about one of the most technical but absolutely critical parts of a research paper, the methods section. Think of this part as the recipe for your study. It tells readers exactly what you did to answer your research question, what materials you used, the reasons you used them, and the steps you followed. A good methods section should be clear enough that another researcher could replicate your study and get the same results. Many papers are rejected because their methods section lacks detail or proper structure. You need to describe your study design, for instance, whether it was experimental, survey-based, or observational. Mention the setting, the time frame, and any relevant guidelines, such as consort or prisma, if you are doing a clinical or systematic study. Next, include your ethics statement to show that your study was approved by the right committee or review board. Then describe your participants or subjects, who they were, how they were selected, and the inclusion or exclusion criteria. After that, explain the equipment or materials you used. The study procedures section should describe exactly what you did, step by step. If there were interventions, treatments, or surveys, explain how they were carried out and what data you collected. Finally, the statistical analysis section should explain how you processed and analyzed your data, what statistical tests you used, what software and version you worked with, and how you determine significance. Remember, the methods section should be written in the past tense and should not report results. Focus only on what was planned and done. When you use AI to write this part, prompt it like this. I will include all the prompts in the description box, but try not to miss the results section explanation, because <laughs> that part is a bit dicey. ChatGPT, or any AI of your choice, will write an excellent and clear method for you with this prompt. Now the results section. The results section depends on a lot of factors. Some people will use ChatGPT to fabricate data and do the analysis. Yes, ChatGPT does an excellent job with that, but it is a no, no, no for me. Collect your actual data using a questionnaire 
interviews, or whatever. Then, you should input them into your software for analysis, like SPSS, or even use AI to do the analysis, but do not fabricate data. Remember that a research paper could be published. You do not want to spread fake results. You can prompt ChatGPT or Claude AI to tell you what statistical test you could use to test a specific hypothesis, and even the steps you should follow to carry out an analysis on SPSS, for example. You can say, explain step-by-step -step how to perform a specific test, like a multiple regression or ANOVA, in SPSS, using my dataset with variables, list variable names, include how to check assumptions and interpret the output when the analysis is ready. You can also simply prompt ChatGPT to interpret the results. You can do it table by table or give a collective prompt like this. The discussion section is, without doubt, the most important part of your research paper. <laughs> this is where you show that you truly understand your study, not just what you found, but what it means. Think of it as the place where your voice as a researcher finally comes through. Here, you don't just restate your results, you interpret them. What do these findings say about your topic? How do they connect with what other scholars have found before you? For instance, if your study shows that small businesses that adopt digital tools grow faster, you might compare that with earlier studies that found mixed results and explain why yours differs. Maybe because your data comes from a different region or time period. The discussion must also be critical. That means you shouldn't just celebrate your findings, you should question them too. Are there alternative explanations? Were there limitations in your sample or method that might affect how generalizable your results are? Then, link your insights back to the theory or framework you used earlier. Does your study confirm the theory, extend it, or challenge it? End this section by explaining the implications, what your results mean for policy, practice, or future research. I have developed a prompt for you to use ChatGPT deep research, or any other AI to write the discussion section. The output from ChatGPT's deep research was good, but I always edit it, adding my own touch based on my understanding of what a discussion section should look like. Finally is the conclusion. Think of your conclusion as the part that brings your entire argument full circle. In a Q1 level paper, your conclusion should do three main things. First. Remind readers what your study was about and what you discovered, the what. Second, explain why these findings matter, the so what. And third, leave readers with the now what, what should be done next or what new questions your research raises. For example, in our sample paper, our conclusion could begin with, this literature demonstrates that remote work has influenced productivity Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then, highlight why these insights matter for organizational policy and suggest directions for future research or business practices. A strong conclusion doesn't repeat the results. It interprets them and situates them in a bigger picture. It shows your contribution to knowledge and encourages readers to think forward. Now for the prompt, just use this. If you follow all I taught you and use the prompts, you will have an excellent, rigorous research paper before you. So what are you waiting for? Hit the like button, comment, and share with your friends and colleagues. You could also check my channel membership program for perks only this channel only offers on YouTube. Don't forget that you must check your papers for AI before final submission. Best of luck. Thanks for watching. Bye.